We've heard some messages recently, uh, some really powerful messages, and uh, uh, we've, heard one, we've heard messages on holiness, the highway of holiness. Bishop preached, uh, past, uh, Pastor Antonio preached a message not long ago on the fear of the Lord. Maybe it was last week or the week before, and, and he's preached one on purity and holiness, and um, we've had a, a, a tremendous prayer focus going on here with a, a message on prayer and an intensity we've felt and seen in the atmosphere that's in the church of worship and adoration and just a, a sense of anticipation. Yeah. How many of you have a sense of anticipation? Yeah. That God's going to do something. I have a sense of anticipation that God's going to do something. That He's and, and He, with all of these messages, I believe that He's He's speaking to us. He's trying to tell us something. And the question is, are we listening? You know, because all around the things we hear on the news, the, the commercials you hear, the stuff that's out there, is that um, is that there are a lot of signs and uh, situations of, you know, the housing market. Sometimes it's getting worse. Sometimes it's, they say it's going to get better. The economy, the, you know, the ups and downs of it. Um, there's there's warning signs, and and there's commercials out about, uh, and I think there's a, a, a new show out now about um, people who hoard or store up uh, stuff. I ha I haven't seen it. I really don't even want to see it. But I, they they're like storing up stuff for doomsday. Um, and I mean, there's just all kinds of stuff out there going on all the time, um, and, and it's really about with those people, they think they're getting prepared, but as people of God, we do need to be prepared, and I believe that the messages that we're hearing, uh, hearing are, are preparation for us, for God when he wants to come and do something uh, spectacular, that we're ready, that we're clean, that we're, we're, we're on the edge saying, yes, Lord, don't pass us by. We want to be a part of the next great move of God. You know, over the years, over the uh, uh, course of history, there have been great moves of God that have swept through uh, Europe and swept, swept through China, swept through America time and time again. Uh, we hear of revivals and whatnot. And so in our day, we should expect that. There's various little moves that are going on in different parts of the country. And those of you who've been here for any length of time know that we had a, a great outpouring of the presence of God in 1997 for those few years. And, and there's been a residue that's lingered ever since. And we just step into it. We just splash in it sometimes and experience the amazing presence and awesomeness of God. And, uh, and, and the thing is, you, you can't, one thing we learned during that time um, and that's true of past revivals and stories we've heard, we hear and we've heard, is that you can't just come into the presence of God blasé, uh, uh, dirty, and expect that you're going to come into his presence. We know the priest in the Old Testament, when he went from the outer court uh, into the inner court and then into the Holy of Holies, he couldn't go in behind the curtain undefiled, I mean defiled. He had to be clean. He had to he had to be ready, and, uh, or he, would, he, could be, uh, he could drop dead and have to be drug out. And we as people of God need to be ready. We can't come into the presence of God just any old way. There's got to be a preparation. And there's various places in Scripture where we see, you know, where, where there has been preparation. One of the stories that probably would come to your mind, as it did my mind when I was thinking about getting ready and what do we need to do to get ready, is the story of Esther. And if you know the story of Esther, in, in Esther chapter 1, verses 13 through 19, you really don't need to go there. And you, you don't really need to put it up on the, on the screen because I'm just going to paraphrase what's happening. I don't want to camp out here for too long. But what was going on is when the king at that time called for his wife to come in before him, she wouldn't come. She had an attitude of rebellion or whatever. Something was going on in her life. And she's just like, you know, and she must have looked at him like, well, you're just, you're just my husband. You know, I'm not coming, but he was the king. And the king superseded the queen's position. And, and she didn't, she just said, you know, I'm not going to come. And so he called uh, for his wise men who understood the times. They understood the times. They knew that this was wrong that she was doing. And they said, she's got to go because she can't be an example and a representative. Obviously, things were different then. If that was the case in this day, I, yeah, yeah, I imagine. I mean, the women, women's libbers would just be, they would be literally up in arms. But, but they understood the times, and this was wrong, and, the, and not the proper protocol for a king. 
And uh, so, so th they gave him counsel to remove her from the royal position because of her behavior. It wasn't, wasn't comely. And it would affect the other women and their attitudes, and it would just be a spiral, a negative spiral that went down. And it would cause them to, it's the, the word says, despise their husbands in their eyes. And so she, couldn't, she could no longer come be before the king after that before him uh, after that. She was put out. She wasn't killed, but she was put out, and he gave the position to another. And so during that time, the, they opened up the, the whole process of women coming in, and they had to go through 12 months of uh, preparation, 12 months of treatment, of preparation with oils and with myrrh and with perfumes. I mean, they took like a 12-month-long bath. Okay, that's a lot of time to spend on a bath and getting clean, isn't it? Twelve months? Well, you know, have you ever considered really how much time you spend in the bathroom? You know, from the time we get up, generally, you probably splash a little water on your face to get your eyeballs open, get the sleep out of your eyes. Do you not? And then, you know, maybe you're up and about for a while and you do whatever you got to do. And, um, and then you, if you're a, a morning bather, you get in the shower. Uh, I hope you do. Maybe you've taken a shower the night before. Your process might be a little different than some processes, but because I'm up here preaching, I'm a morning showerer. And so you get in the shower. And... And we don't just get in the shower. I mean, we don't just take a bath. Sorry. We don't just take a bath. We do a lot of things to these bodies of ours to try and get them clean. Well, okay, let me just speak for myself. I do a lot of things to this body of mine to get clean. And I, and I don't just stop there. I, be, I go beyond that, and I do some things to prepare myself so my appearance will be pleasing to anybody who sees me. Yeah. Well, you do that because I can see you look pretty good today. But um, if I was to ask the husbands when they first got up this morning, did their wives look as good then as they do right now, the one you're sitting beside? Well, no, they did. OK, you are a wise man. Um, and I, if I was to ask the, wi the wives if, if you're, you're uh, your husbands look just as good as they do right now. You might say, well, you know, really, men, they got it pretty easy, don't you think? They got it pretty easy? Because I'm going to slap all this makeup stuff on and, you know, but, but they, they are known to primp and do some things, you know. And I mean, my husband's hair in the morning does not look like my husband's hair when he's standing on the platform. <laughs> sometimes I look at it and go, he looked like Woody Woodpecker today. And then sometimes I go, you know, you ought to start trying to wear your hair like that when it's all sticking up like that. Sometimes it's, okay, bleep, 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 because he, he, he can tell some stories on me. No, no, no question, no question about it, no question about it. Do you know that getting clean is really big business? I mean, big business. How big a business? $333 billion. That's how big it is is what they expect the yearly to be in, by 2015. And I looked at some stats, like from 2008, 2009, and every year, it was not just growing by millions, it was growing by a billions. And uh, so it is big business. Um, you know, what got me kind of started on this, on this message is I went to the store, I was at the store, I think I went, was at Target or somewhere, not just my little grocery store, but a grocery store that has, I mean, a store that has like a gazillion of everything. And I was just looking for my regular dial bar soap. Yeah, that's about how much trouble I had finding it when I was there. Oh my gosh, oh. Don't you use a shower cap? Oh, you just wait. Well, anyway, it's hidden in here somewhere, or maybe I ended up not even bringing it. And, uh, but I went down the aisle to find my, my, my soap, a bar soap. Now, you know, there's not just bar soap. There's pump soap. There's foamy soap. There's perfume soap. There's, there's I mean, 
I have some here. I have so much here. There are so many things that we can do to clean ourselves. Do you know you can clean your nostrils out with a neti pot? It does wonders for you. You can pick your teeth with, it's a part of cleaning. You can pick them with a toothpick, with dental floss, with these little special micro mint freshens breath placards. You can, you can use your finger. Sometimes a piece of cardboard, if you don't have anything else, you can take a little piece of paper and fold it up and get it real sharp. And You've all done that. Don't even tell me. It's amazing what we do to get ourselves right and the time we spend. But it's a multi-million dollar business. I hear, okay, I was talking about the soap. Soap itself is, the, I mean, there was, I just wanted white bar soap. So I, I, I go through the ivory, the zest, the dove, the dial, the lever, the antibacterial, the white, the green, the blue, the pink. I just want to find white. White bar soap, about six bars. And finally, way on the bottom, because it wasn't perfumey, it wasn't fancy, had no color, it probably is cheaper. It, there it was. I found my bar soap and I brought it home because we're just plain old people who like plain old white bar soap. No perfume, no color, none of that stuff because we just need to get clean. <laughs> and, and so there, there, there it was. But it's big business from skin care to body care, bath and shower products, hair care, facial care, lip care, shaving products for men, shaving products for lady, hair care, oh, did I say that? Deodorant, fragrance, I mean, you name it. There, it's, it's there. Perfume, baby toiletries. My gosh, they even have guinea pig soap and dog soap and Elephant soap. I actually saw that on the internet. Imagine such a thing. I guess the zoo needs it. <laughs> there's oral care. There's all of this that goes on. There is there's an, an endless supply that's bringing in big bucks. And then once we spend all the money that we spend, because look at this is just me and my stuff, me and my stuff. And I don't know how much money that is, but then you, times you and your stuff. And how much time does it take for me to use all this stuff? I got to thinking about it compared to the time maybe we spend in prayer, in the presence of God. I was like, gee, do I take an hour at least to get ready? I mean, if I'm washing my hair and taking a shower and doing all the things, I mean, if I'm washing my hair, it's just a process to, to get all my stuff ready. It's just a process. It, you know, the, the, Here's what a morning looks like, in case you didn't know. I'm preaching this message just so I could wear comfortable shoes. That's, that's a, just so I could wear comfortable You get up in the morning, you wash your face. You go in, even though you took a bath yesterday. Maybe you didn't even sweat the day, that whole day. Maybe you just laid around all day. Don't you still get up and you take another bath? You take, get up, and you think, well, I'm probably not dirty. I get in the shower. Uh, don't worry. I have clothes on over here. You get in the shower. You do all your stuff. You, you, there you are. Oh, you, you gotta get ready. <laughs> you get your soap, you get your toothbrush, you get all your pieces. I get my little foot sander, I take a shower. Not only do I scrub my body, I, I have to get off the stuff off my feet. And then not only do I have to get off the stuff off my feet in the shower while they're wet because they're dry, hard, scaly feet that scratches my husband and rips my stockings. And then I have to get my little sander afterwards when my feet are all dry, and I have to sand them off with a hard side. Then I have to sand them off with a soft side. Who knows what I'm talking about? Okay, I'm like, why? My husband has the most soft, tender feet you can imagine. I'm like, what is up with that? And I mean, I have to use nail files on my cuticles because they're so dry. So I'm just a dry person. I need, that's why I need lots of water. I must not drink enough because it never seems to get down to my feet. So, <laughs> so a shower cap. This is how I look kind of in the morning. So if I'm not going to tuck my hair all in, then we get, you know, then we get, a, you know, we get in there and we think we're not dirty and we wash off and, oh, I got a great shower at my house. It sprays out this way. It sprays out. I love taking a shower. And I'm thinking, well, I wasn't very dirty. And I get out of the shower. I go, oh my gosh, how did I get so dirty? I wasn't even dirty yesterday. And here I, look at this. Look at 
at this. How did I get so dirty? And I mean, just, uh, just, just by doing hardly anything, I got dirty without any effort. And that's amazing. And then I get out, and then I start with all the other stuff. Cream for my face. Stuff for my hair. Uh, that's not counting makeup. That's just like the stuff you get on to get it ready for the makeup. Or the, or the shaving men. You know, you got to shave your face. you got to get the shaver out, the razor out, and do all that stuff. And you got to get, get some gargle in there and clean your stuff up. Look, I even have stuff to clean my jewelry. We aren't even going to talk about cleaning products for the house and for, you know, other stuff. But there's a lot of money and a lot of time that goes into cleaning. And yet, how clean are we? We might look all good on the outside. You know, I look at sometimes a magazine and I see these beautiful models or you look on TV and you see these beautiful people that look all good from the outside, but on the inside, they're just dirty. There's just stuff in their lives. And you know what? Just living, just living, even as a Christian, stuff happens. Because we live in, you know, life is messy. Have you found that life is messy? I mean, do you ever just get up in the morning and suddenly you're bombarded with like just some really stupid, nasty thought that comes out of where? You don't even know where it comes out of and you just go, what is that? And then you just kind of think, well, you know, why am I thinking about that? Or where did that thought come from? You know, maybe something that you dreamt and then it's left over and you just wonder, how did that thought come? What do you do with that? Do you sit there and you dwell on it? You ponder it? Do you, you go, well, you know, and do you uh, cultivate it and massage it and let it expand and so you think even more about it? Or do you know how to just nip it right then and say, no way, no way. You know, when I get up in the morning, you've heard Bishop say, first thing he does, he gets up, prays, and uh, sitting on the side of the bed. And, um, and he, never, he never goes forward, really gets out of the bed or does anything before he's prayed. And I know when, when I pray in the morning, I mean, it, I can't say the first time all the time because my memory isn't that good to remember that. But, I mean, I, I know I pray, God, you know, I thank him for who he is. I thank him for his goodness. I thank him for his blessings and his power and, and all of that. But I, I thank him for his, his, that he cleanses me. And I'll, I'll declare, I'll just say, Father, you know, I, I thank you for the blood of Jesus. I ask you to wash me, to cleanse me, to purify me, pur purify my thoughts. Make my thoughts clean and wholesome and, and let me be, uh, uh, you know, a vessel that's clean and honorable for you today. Be, because, and you know what? I do that every day. Why? Because life is messy. Stuff just happens. And we can get soiled. We can get dirty. We can get, those are too hot. We, <laughs> you don't want me up here sweating. I'll have to take another shower. <laughs> we, can, we can just get so consumed um, um, with stuff that we do each day need to come daily and come to him for cleansing. Um, and, and for, for purifying. Let me just share a couple little things about soap and getting clean because it ties into what I want to share with you beyond the actual natural cleaning process. But soup, soap was, it actually still is, made up of wood, it, it was made up of wood ash and fat. I mean, imagine, wood ash and fat. Now it's mostly composed of caustic soda, or which is lye, you know, you can go back in the Bible, in the Old Testament, and read about lye soap. Uh, there's a scripture in Job that talks about lye soap, in Malachi, it's in Malachi. Um, so it's, and then fat, which could be either animal fat, which just sounds nasty. <laughs> Ugh, I'm washing, I'm wash, whoa. Oh, Q-tips, did I mention Q-tips? My Q-tips were in with my tissues. I'm washing with soap. Just imagine it's soap. I'm washing with soap. Imagine it's like animal fat. How, that just seems wrong. How can you get clean putting animal fat all over your body? <laughs> or now, you know, it's palm oil and olive oil. But still, a, a large segment of soap still has some sort of animal fat in it. Alkali and glycerin. And it's a staple of life. We all get clean with soap. Right. If you just take a shower with water and nothing else. Do you know that um, water itself just doesn't do the job? Because water can't break down oil and grease and dirt. It can wash off like sugar, because I'm so sweet, you know, I probably have to wash off that sugar every day. 
because I don't want to just be too gooey. You know, it can wash off sugar, it can wash off salt. Uh, you can go to the beach and come home and take a, just a shower and get the salt off of you, but if, if you've got that on you, it's going to take some soap <laughs> to get that off of you. And you might have to do some, you might need to get that loofah out or that little squishy, spongy thing and, you know, put a little, like I have to use this. Thankfully, I don't have to use this on my skin. My, my skin comes clean with a washcloth. Isn't that good news? But, but water alone doesn't do it. It can't dissolve oily dirt, which flees from water molecules as like fleeing for dear life. It doesn't, it doesn't even like to get around oily stuff. Um, but th this is what happens. Um, it, soap has the opposite effect of water because its, mole its molecule is a chain. One end hates oil and loves water, and the other end loves oil and hates water. Did I say that right? One end hates oil and loves water, the other end loves oil and hates water. And because of that, when soap interacts with water, it clusters and it snags the dirt and gets it off of you or off the floor or wherever that dirt is, which is interesting. So why am I telling you that? The water of the word is good, and the word is our bread. The word is water. It's life to us. Um, but we need more. We need the blood of Jesus in our lives to cleanse us, to wash us, to purify us from sin. We're going to talk today about the blood. Um, just spend a little bit of time on it and the need for our hearts to be purified and clean and uh, what all this means to us as we go forward and we pursue all that God has for us as a people and um, have our lives ready. You know that we can be like a soap dispenser that people, if, if, we're, if we're clean and we're filled up with God, we should be like a soap dispenser, that we're out there and people can just tap us. You know, like, oh, in my purse, I left it over there. But, you know, there's uh, the antibacterial, um, the, what's that stuff called? Sanitizer, I want to say insecticide. Sanitizer, <laughs> which we carry around. I mean, we don't just, you know, wash our hands in the bathroom. We carry around the... the sanitizer, the insecticide, to get off the bugs off of us, you know? And then we do put stuff on us to keep the bugs off of us. And then we do put on sunscreen to keep the sun from getting too hot and burning our skin for protection. And we'll talk about the blood and how the blood is, it not only cleanses us, but it also protects us. It, the blood is powerful. The blood that was shed for us, you know, with all the billions of dollars that's spent on cleaning, all the stuff deodorant, perfume, sunscreen. I mean, then, you know, then, then we got spray that we can spray around just to get the smell out. And, and it's, a, it's a big business. And think if we would take the attention that we give to all of this in our own lives. Just little old me, just little old me. This is God talking to me. Maybe he'll whisper to you. Maybe he'll nudge you. Maybe he'll convict you. But this is me. If, if I was as diligent, or if I am as diligent, I hope I'm diligent, but I know I can be more diligent with taking care of all these things that have to do with this body that is going to perish, that's going to be laid in the ground, just to turn to ash, ashes and dust. If that's all it's going to be. What about the me that is going to live forever? Yes. And, and that, that can be a light shining on the earth today. What am I doing for it? So it can be, ha, fulfill its purpose, never mind this natural body. Oh, now, if I go around with B.O. and I don't brush my teeth and I got lettuce in my teeth and got bad breath and, I, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to share with somebody the goodness of God, they might say, you know, why don't you go home, take a bath, brush your teeth, put some deodorant on, put some perfume on, uh, fix yourself up, brush your hair, you know, get the gnats out of it and the bugs out of it and, uh, you know, get that. So then come back and talk to me. So we need to do those things because we need to not be so ugly and nasty and disgusting because that's what we would be. But, uh, but if we would pamper our spirit man yes. like we pamper our flesh, what kind of people would we be? Where would our hearts be? How would we look? How would we respond? So soap alone, I mean, water alone can't do the job, but cleaning is a multi-million dollar business, but the blood of Jesus and the washing and the cleansing, no charge. 
Isn't that a good thing? Free for all time. You never have to pay with money. You never have to pay. It's always available. It's always there. It's never going out of business. There's no additives you have to worry about. There's no like allergies you have to worry about. There's no limit to how much time you can spend in that place of being cleansed and washed and purified. There's not, it's not like you can, you know, if you're in a bathtub for three hours, you're gonna come out all shriveled up and your nails are gonna be all soft and you're just gonna look nasty. And it's gonna make you drier to your skin than if you just jump in, take a quick shower and, and get out, you know, depending on the kind of skin you have. But there are no limitations in what we can, huh, have the reign of God, the power, presence of God, the blood of Jesus flowing over us in our lives, part of us, everything we do, no limit, no hazards, no issues, no requirement, well, uh, no, no limitations. And there's requirements after you're washed in as a Christian, but, oh, it's so easy because when you kind of get a little dirty unexpectedly, my brain sometimes just needs a little more attention because stuff runs through there. Why does it run through there? What happens? What makes us have these thoughts? What are we looking at? What are we listening to? What are we allowing? Yes. What kind of bitterness are we harboring? Ah. What kind of attitudes do we have? Mm -hmm. What kind of disobedience are we uh, walking in? Yes. Well, you know, there's usually something that's... How's my hair look? <laughs> there's usually something going on that dirties us. Uh, and sometimes maybe it's not just ourselves, but being in the world, yeah. being out there. Yeah. You know, you can walk into a 7-Eleven. Sorry, 7-Eleven people. Uh, we, you could walk into a 912, <laughs> and um, it, could be, it could be filled with smoke. You know, one person in there smoking. And you come back and get in the car, and everybody who's in the car waiting for you is like, you smell like smoke. Isn't that the truth? It just gets on you. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I came in to church, and um, I kept smelling gasoline. And I had stopped and gotten gas on the way, and I knew that some of it had spilled out. And I washed my hands when I got, home, got, when I got here. Um, but I stood there, I kept smelling gas, and I was like, I kind of run my hands up. I was like, is that me? I mean, do I want to smell like gas? No, I want to smell like my sweet little Fendi perfume that I like so much. And I, but I kept smelling gas. And it was so funny because, I, you know, I was like, maybe it spilled on me and I didn't know it. Well, it's a potent smell. This morning, I was standing here and I was like, I smell gas. I smell gas. And I was like, oh my gosh, did I have this jacket on that day? No, I didn't have this jacket on that somebody else had gas on. But I was standing there, and, and somebody around me in the vicinity of probably six feet around had gas on them. And, and it just made me think, that how powerful just a little something that gets on you can cause an aroma. And so don't take it from a natural thing, but if we're marred or if we have bitterness inside of us, sometimes we don't have to say anything. It just kind of leaks out by a, a tone of our voice. If we have anger, um, it just leaks out by something we say. If we have jealousy, it just kind of, you know, it just emanates off of us when we, when we speak to somebody. And, and sometimes even just a face, like Mike, Pastor Mike today could look out and kept telling us to smile, and I was smiling, and the next time we said it, I was like, oh, I went back to not smiling. And then I smiled again. And then he said it again. You know, it's hard to just keep yourself smiling all the time. You know, you can't talk when you're smiling. And, and some people are up here who are singing, and they weren't smiling. And, uh, and even when they weren't singing, they still weren't smiling. I wanted to go up and go, did you hear him tell you to smile? But it's hard. It's hard to smile all the time, isn't it? Come on, you're not even smiling sitting there. You're not even smiling. You're all looking too soon. Yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, okay, there you go. It does good to smile. It does good to laugh. It's good for us. Why did I say all that? Oh, just because we are so easily contaminated by stuff and, uh, our, and, and, and other people can pick up on it. And we have to be busy about keeping this personhood, our spirit, our soul, and our mind clean. Our spirit man is clean. He's clean. He's clean. The spirit of God lives inside of us. But we bring in pollution, 
into our thoughts yes. and into our attitudes. And, and that's what he wants to deal with. So let's talk a little more about getting clean. You know, if you, if you look up scripture on, on clean, getting clean, wash, or being purified, there's like over 200 scriptures. Um, and I looked in various uh, translations, it's pretty much the same. It's just in there over and over again. More than it talks about being born again, it talks about being clean. And, and when it talks about being clean, it talks about washing your hands, washing your face, washing your feet, washing your clothes. Uh, that's what we do, right? Still, after all these years, back you go to Genesis and it starts there and you start seeing about washing, washing, washing. We've got to wash to stay clean. To, we've got to wash our clothes to stay clean. Um, people had to wash after Jesus touched them with mud and spittle and put it in our eyes, and then he said, go wash. He told the man to get into the pool and wash. We know that um, in the Old Testament, uh, Naaman, well, Naaman had to go dip seven times. He had to come up. He had to be obedient. He had to, it wasn't really washing, but it was washing. It was dipping. It was getting wet. He had to go down. He had to come up. He had to do what he needed to do so he could be healed. And so that's just a part of life. Uh, the Bible says in Psalm 24, verse 3 through 5, Who may ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Who has clean hands, he who has clean hands and a pure heart? How many of you want to have clean hands and a pure heart? And it's not talking about clean hands and the natural. Yes, we do need to clean our hands. Yes, we do need to use the uh, sanitizer. Yes, we do need to do those things. We need to keep ourselves clean, but we need to have clean hands so that we can, when we are touching other people and we're handling things, it's, there's a cleanliness about us, there's a godliness about us, and that means we're not picking up filthy literature or unclean things and bringing them in, or we're keeping our eyes uh, clean and pure and not allowing us to watch or read or, or do things that are, that are ungodly and not, not going to lift us up and be edifying to the Lord. Um, and then it goes on to say, um, so he who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. And that's what will happen. How can we ascend to the place of the, the hill of the Lord? We want to go up. We want to be in that place. The hill of the Lord. I mean, God showed up on the mountain. God shows up in the holy place. We want to be clean. We want to be able to go in. One thing we found during the, the meetings from 97 to, to 2000, and, and when it was so intense and the presence of God was here and there was repentance and weeping and just, you know, after just hours of that, just a, a cloud of God's glory would come into the room. A lot of people wouldn't stay. And a lot of people didn't stay even at, at the church because they just couldn't handle it. But uh, oftentimes we could see from the ones that came and went and didn't stay, you know, there was a requirement. There's a requirement to be stripped and cleansed, be, to be able to come into that holy place, just like the priests. They couldn't go in defiled. They couldn't go in with spots on them, with dirt on them. They had to be clean. Their garments had to be clean. And we can a lot of times hide things. You can wear something, you know, if, if it's not a real bright place. You know, I've come in, I've come in uh, um, and, and gone, oh, this is a, getting ready for church and my top is all wrinkled and I'll just go, oh, I'm going to put a jacket on anyway. You know, or maybe it's not, you know, and I'll go, well, nobody's going to see it. Nobody's going to see it, you know, because it's wrinkled, it's not going to see it, you know. Or sometimes we don't even know there's a wrinkle. You know, pants have been hung up in the closet. You don't look in the mirror, men. You got a big wrinkle. I saw one in my husband's pants just recently. I was like, oh my gosh, he's got a big wrinkle there. It must have been. And, and, and it just happens. All right, that's not sinful or anything, but big wrinkles can happen in our lives. Yes. Just because we get folded up into some kind of a situation that's uncomfortable and we're squished in and we don't know how to get out, we can get big wrinkles. And we can't just get Botox and Retin A and stuff to get the wrinkles out of our person, our inner man, we got to get the blood of Jesus to cleanse us and wash us and purify us because those other things are temporary and they're outward and he wants to do something so much deeper. But we would see that people just couldn't stay and they, and we, we had people even say, you know, I, I just don't want, want this much of God. It's just too much for me. And there are people really like that who just is like, this is a little bit more, a little too emotional. So they thought, well, it really wasn't emotion, but if you're not there 
if you don't know, if you're not clean, and you're not ready to come in to that place of intense worship in the presence of God. Ephesians 5, 25 through 27. Um, the subject in this portion of scripture is ma marriage, and it talks about the husband, it talks about the wife, and, but then it goes on to talk about Christ and the church. And um, it says, uh, uh, Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, this is in verse 25, 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. That's what God is looking for. We're, we, the bride of Christ, Bishop was just talking about us being the bride. Can you imagine a bride coming to get married they aren't going to come down with a wrinkled gown and dirt all over it. They're not going to come down with their hair all, you know, matted. And they're going to go to the spa and they're going to probably have a massage and they're going to have their makeup done and they're going to have somebody do their hair. They're going to smell so good and look so good and be so ready that everything on the outside looks perfect for that husband that they are coming town to say, I do with and to live with for the rest of their lives. And so Christ... He comes and sanctify and washes us with the word so that we, he, he's coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle. Are we ready yet? Are we ready? Do we, are we without spot or blemish or wrinkle? We're not exactly there yet. And that's why it's so important that we come before him. You know, he'll get out the Holy Ghost iron and iron out a wrinkle. He'll get out the Holy Ghost uh, lye soap and, and, uh, and, and wash us clean and get us where we need to be. In Genesis 35, too, Jacob told his household and all who were with him to put away their foreign gods and purify themselves and change their garments. Ruth, this is just a few scriptures about cleaning and washing. Ruth 3.3 was told to wash herself and to put on her best garments and go to the threshing floor where Boaz was and lay at his feet. So even to go and lay at his feet, she had to cleanse herself. She had to put on her best garments so she could go there and be ready. And as the result of it was, she ended up um, becoming his wife. Psalms 51.2 says, Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Hyssop, hyssop was dipped in blood in the Old Testament and put on the doorpost so that the angel of death would pass, do, pass over it on the lintel and on the doorpost. And our lives, our heart is a doorpost. And the, and the blood of Jesus can be sprinkled on there regularly on our doorpost so that the, the angel of death will pass by, so there will be protection for us. But, you know, so many times people, Christians even, don't even understand really uh, the power and, and, and all that, that the blood is about. The blood of Jesus is the most precious gift our Heavenly Father has given us church. And it hasn't changed. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And as I said, it doesn't cost anything. It's free. No gimmicks. No hazards. None of that. It's available for all of us. And so the, we, we, you know, when we get saved... We get washed in the blood. We ask God to come, cleanse us, forgive us, save us. And you know what? It's done. It's done. But it doesn't mean that we'll never get dirty again. Isn't that right? We still have times where we get dirty again from the things that I've already mentioned. And so we have to come again and just ask for, not for to get saved. We don't have to come to the altar over and over and over again to get saved. Unless you've totally backslidden and walked away from God for some length of time, you might need to come back and really get yourself right. But on a day-to-day -day basis, and sometimes we'll see people come over and over and over again. You know what? You ask Jesus to come, forgive you, cleanse you, and make you new and become a Christian. You, he does it. He's faithful. Yeah. But we do have to guard ourselves. We do have to have a little touch-up, and, and that comes by just asking him to come and sprinkle us with his blood, which, as I said, is also a protection. Because walking in the world gets us dirty. It just happens. Dirt happens. Mess happens. And so we need to get cleaned up. Um, oops. How many of you getting this? Yes. You getting it? Yes. Another scripture. Let me just uh, share the scripture with you. Uh, uh, before I do, uh, I just need to know. Okay. Um, how many of you 
have to have uh, somebody wash you. Yeah, you know, when you're an adult, a teenager, once you get to be like five or six or maybe eight or nine, you don't need mama in there scrubbing you anymore, do you? Sometimes she has to get in there and go, did you clean those ears? Okay, let me get the washcloth, clean your ears, you know. But when we're grown, unless we're an invalid, we can wash ourselves. Aren't you glad? Yeah. I don't want any of you coming and helping me to get washed any more than you want me to come and help you get washed. It's a, we're grown up. We don't, nobody else can take a bath for us. We have to do it ourselves. It takes initiative. And nobody else can come before and ask God to cleanse us because you know what? We know, we know what's inside of us. We know what we're doing. We know the thoughts we've had. We know the little thing that maybe we shouldn't have done. We know the little lie that we told. We know the little thing that we took and maybe we shouldn't have taken. We know the little thing that we watched or we read or any of those things. We know. And even when we don't say it, even we know. And then maybe we go, oh, no, well, that, that's not a big deal. Oh, that's not. He knows. Yeah. He knows. Yeah. And he sees. And, and that's, that's where the bath comes in. You know, I, I, so thankfully, a good friend will sometimes point out that you have a smudge or a piece of lettuce in your tooth. I mean, a good friend will tell you that. They won't let you. Aren't you glad? You know, or I, I was with my uh, grandsons recently. <laughs> it's so bad. I won't tell you which one. Not my son's kid, so... But we were talking, and we were talking all kinds of things, and he's just, oh, I, well, I shouldn't tell you because you'll know which one. Anyway, I, in the midst of talking, I said, you got a boogie in your nose. <laughs> and he was like, oh, you know. But because we're family, he, he, at first I thought, oh, did I embarrass him? No, he's a boy, you know. He's like, oh, okay. And, you know, he took care of the boogie in his nose, you know. But I was like, I'd rather him know he's got a boogie in his nose than go out there with his friends that he was going to later. And, and then the friend go, man, you're nasty. You know, I mean, I've had, I'll, I'll say to people sometimes, I just had salad for lunch. Do I have lettuce in my teeth? I, I wouldn't send it to, say it to just anybody, but I'd say it to Dar. I, I'd say it to, to Amy. I'd say, Amy, do I have do I have lettuce in my teeth? I've got this really toothy that it's just hard to always, it's always got something in it. It's good to have a friend like that. Okay, you're just going, no, that's just so nasty. No, that's just so real. Because every one of you got something on you sometime or other. And wouldn't you rather have somebody tell you than you go out there and then you come home and you go, oh my gosh, did I have that there the whole time on my interview? Oh, how embarrassing. You know? Well, if we would have an ear to hear, the Holy Spirit would say, mm, no, you shouldn't be looking at that. Mm, that's not a good thing to be doing. Mm, that's a bad attitude. Mm, that, I hear anger in that tone. Mm, I hear resentment. Ooh, bitterness. Oh, there's some jealousy there. Well, you're spending too much time on materialism and wanting and envying and coveting. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. If we would have an ear to hear, if we would have an ear to hear. Uh, you know, I, I did actually bring a number of Q-tips. Anybody need one? Anybody need one? Clean those ears out? Uh, I, got, I, I think I got some. Uh, I think I got some eye drops too. You know, get those eyes cleared up a little bit. You know. So we can be ready, so we can be there, so we can go in and be in the presence of God and be who he wants to be and be a dispenser of his glory and a dispenser of his, his, uh, his love and his mercy and his grace and say, look, it doesn't matter. Because some people do something and they mess up and they think it's curtains. It's done, it's over, forget it, and they walk away. How many of you know people who've done that? They walk away, no, well, there's no hope for me. Yes, there's always hope because we serve a loving, forgiving, merciful God. Does it mean that, oh, we can just go out and do anything and, and, and just whenever because we go, oh, the blood of Jesus, oh, the blood of Jesus. No, but there is the blood of Jesus. There is the washing. There is the cleansing. Now, when, if we're going to tempt him, if we're going to, well, he's going to put some things on our way to make us trip up big time. Big time, fall on our faces, get hurt, get really dirty, get bumped, get knocked in the head, some sense, whatever. He will do whatever it takes, won't he, Jerome? To knock some sense in your head, right? Has he ever had to knock some sense in your head? You know, I'm talking to you, Ashton. Has he ever had to knock some sense in your head? I mean, he knows how to do it. 
He's had to knock some sense in my head when I think, yeah, well, I'm right. I'm right. I know I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. I'm not saying I'm sorry. It's him. It's not me. I'm right. I'm right. Before I know it, I'm on my face, tripped, fell right over my rightness. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I think I was wrong. Please forgive me. Oh, my gosh. You know, I mean, when you have a spat or an issue with your spouse, which, I mean, only happens once every five years for me, probably. Um, you know, just a little difference of opinion or just in there just like this, doesn't in there this thing that's just kind of like a, well, for me, it's just like, ugh. It's like a, it's like a wet towel hanging over me all day instead of a wet blanket since we're talking about bathing. It's just like it's there. And as soon as the air is cleared with a kiss, I love you, I'm sorry, what was that, whatever, it's like, ah, freedom. And, and it's good. It's even easier that, than that with God. It's easier because he's always there. I mean, you don't have to wait for your husband to come home or your wife to come home or, you, or whatever. But he's there in just a moment, in a second, wherever you are, whenever. He's there. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, going on a little bit, it says, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. Good scripture, isn't it? If we walk in the light... As he's in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from sin. But have you ever thought about the fact that if we're walking in the light, as he's in the light, then why in the heck do we need to get cleansed from our sins? How are we not staying clean? If we're walking in the light, and he's in the light, and there we are walking with him, how are we getting all sinful? Yes, sir. Why, why does it say that? Well, if we go back to verse 6, it's, verse 6 says, if we say that we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie, and we don't live by the truth. So if that's the case, then we, after that scripture, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and we don't live by the truth. Verse 7, but if we walk in the light, as he's in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So here's what's happening here. If we do walk in the light, and then we do live by the truth, and we do have fellowship with God, then what sins are we committing while we're walking in the light? And, and I believe that there's, there's only really one answer that's possible here, and, and, and Jesus knows this. As long as we live in this world, we're going to get dirty. Right, yeah. it, it just happens. Even though we're born again, spirit-filled children of God, walking in the light doesn't mean that we're never going to get dirty. It doesn't mean that we're going to be living a perfect life. We're going to get dirty. We might, we, we'll sin because we are sinners by nature. We are human beings that fall short. But there's cleansing for us. So we're not going to be perfect. I mean, some people think they're already perfect, I'm sure, who are in here. So this is the bad news for you. You're not. You're never going to be perfect while you're on this earth. So if you're making your spouse, you know, feel like that you're always perfect or you're telling you're always perfect, you're wrong because you're not always perfect. Only Christ is perfect. We have the Holy Spirit. He is, but we, his spirit lives in these fleshly bodies and we are far from perfect. And so we're going to get dirty. We'll never be perfect in this life. And we'll always need purification and we'll always need cleansing. That's why we have to wash. That's why we need the blood of Jesus. Even though we've been saved, we've got to ask him to sprinkle us, to cleanse us. We need purification and cleansing because life is messy. And, but that's, that's not a license to sin. Again, it's not a license to sin, but what it should do is push us towards consecration and a deeper holiness with God. It should cause us to really cry out for God to cleanse us and keep us cleansed and purify us so we can walk in the light and be led by the Spirit and not led by the flesh. And that's a constant process. I don't care whether you're, you've been saved five years, 10, 20, 30, 40. It's a constant process. We should get better at it, but we are still human beings after 40 years of being saved. I've been saved 40 years. I still ask God to cleanse me. I still ask him for his blood to be shed for me and sprinkle me and rid me of some of the stuff and make me more like him hey. daily because I'm just real people just like you and I need it. We can live in harmony with the word, not the world. And that's what we need to declare. That's what we need to be praying. That's what we need to be walking out. You know, in John 13, um, Jesus knew when he washed the feet of the disciples, he knew that one of them was going was gonna, to um, 
defy him and, and turn him in and betray him. Um, and remember Peter says, you know, well, not just my feet, but my whole body, Lord. But what did Jesus say? He didn't wash his whole body because Peter was clean. He was his. He belonged to Christ. But in that day, their feet did get soiled by the, the, the circumstances, the, the, the land where they lived with a lot of dirt. And that was a natural washing, but it's also an example to us to show that, yeah, we do need to have cleansing as we go forward in this life, but not necessarily a whole bath. Jesus said, you don't need a whole bath. You don't need it from your head to your feet. Look, you're mine. You belong to me, but you're going to need a little cleaning up once in a while. So, you know, wash what needs to be washed and do it on a daily basis because we get dirty every day. And so we need to, one sign that we're living in fellowship with our Father is that we are quick to repent and careful to guard our hearts. But if sin is our mainstay, and if lust rules us, or if pride dominates us, if hatred controls us, if materialism governs us, where is our fellowship with the Holy Spirit? Or our intimacy and our closest with Jesus. How are we walking in the light if those things are our mainstay? We have to keep those things from being our mainstay and making him our mainstay, and, and, and that happens by asking him for this cleansing, daily cleansing. Then we get out there, and, and we're so attuned to dirt and stuff that we will be more, more uh, open to saying, no, 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 I'm not going to put myself in that place. No, I'm not going to go to that bar. No, I'm not going to go with you on that little venture with your friends. No, I'm, 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 I'm guarding my heart. I'm guarding who I am. I want to stay clean. I don't want to get contaminated. It doesn't mean you walk around with a holier-than-thou kind of an attitude. You're real people, but you know what you need. You know where your weaknesses are. You've got to guard yourself, and nobody else can do it for you. And nobody else, somebody else might be able to give you a little help, just like, let us in the key. But, you, you, so you need to hear some counsel and some help because people are just trying to help you out there. But we've got to be accountable. All right, let me just talk to you a minute about the blood and we're going to pray. Amen? Amen? Let me tell you about human blood. Human blood, you know, if you want to hear good messages about the blood, Bishop preached, I don't know how long ago, it's been, it's been some years, but there's a whole series about the blood that is excellent. And I don't have the time. He preached for weeks and weeks and weeks. And there are books there are volumes. There's just so much out there on the blood of Jesus. We don't have time to, but just touch a little something about it that is, that is powerful. And first of all, human blood, I just did a little research on human blood from a website called How Stuff Works, and it said, this, this is actually what the website said, human blood is the river of life in our bodies. Interesting that it says it's a river of life. Blood is the fluid of life. Without blood, the body would stop working. It delivers essential elements, and it removes harmful waste. Now, if you're a doctor or a nurse or have any kind of medical background, you probably know this. But our blood, it, 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 it keeps us living. It pumps through us. It's our life. We can't live without it. In the process of that, it's cleaning. It's purifying waste from our body continually. On the inside of us, on, in our natural bodies, well, and at the same way, we need to be busy about purifying and allowing the Holy Spirit to be like that filter that, that cleans our thought process and carries away the, the garbage. Um, natural blood carries away waste products and carries nutrients and oxygen to every cell in the body. Blood is alive. If human blood can do that, how much more can the blood of Jesus do? The blood of Jesus. Jesus is the only human who, ever, who, who could absorb and ultimately survive the cleansing we so desperately need. Because of him, we're washed not by force so intense, you know, that it annihilates us, but by the blood of the Lamb. You know, you ever, you know, some of our past sins before we got saved, you might say, ah, I need a power washer to come and clean me up. You know, I read a story about somebody who was using a power washer on their house and, and, and a bug bit them and they turned around and, to swat the bug and they shot the power washer on their leg. And they had to go to the hospital because they had muscle damage in their leg from the force of the power washer. And uh, so thank, thankfully, God doesn't use that kind of force, but he just, the, with the blood of Jesus, he can just cleanse. No matter how wicked and how evil we ever were before we come to him, he can just wash it away in one moment, one moment. What product is like that? Shoot, I gotta use this stuff every day. I gotta use this soap three or four, five, six, ten times a day. I gotta put deodorant on every day. Maybe some people think I need to put it on more than that. I put my perfume on, you know, in the morning. I put it on. I mean, I, put, I do my face in the morning with some stuff, and then I do it again at night. And then, you know, I, 
It's a constant. But his blood. That we don't need a bunch of stuff. It's just his blood. His blood. His blood. His blood. It is God's holiness doing what God's holiness does. That's what the blood of Jesus is. Jesus is the only one who could absorb that. And too many of us don't really understand. You know, we say that his blood has cleansed us. We say that it washed our sins. We say, you know, that we're covered by his blood. We say, you know, we say, we, well, we drink the cup at communion. And for some people, that's maybe once a month when they show up on Sunday night or maybe once every few months. You know, and yes, that is partaking of his body, his flat, his body and his blood, but that isn't going to do it for us. It's a daily washing. It's a daily cleansing we need. And we know that Jesus shed his blood for us, but we do we know and believe and stand on the fact daily that, that it never loses its power. His blood never loses its power. It never runs out. It's always available. It cleanses us. It provides protection for us. Um, Exodus 12, 22, this is a reference I made earlier where the Israelites were commanded to take hyssop and dip it in, you know, to, to, the, to, the, um, to the slain lamb and sprinkle it on the doorpost. So I talked about that. And, and, and it, was for, it was not just for cleansing, but it was for protection. And so is his blood today for protection. You know that Satan's nickname, Beelzebub, means Lord of the Flies. And dead flies, I mean dead blood, will draw flies in the natural. You know, a dead body and blood, if you spill blood, you know, out, you know, let's just use uh, a, an animal's blood for an example. If it's out there, you know, flies, bl uh, flies are attracted to that. Flies are attracted to dead blood and they'll quickly, uh, 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 will breed corruption in the coagulated blood. But the blood of Jesus has exactly the opposite effect. It repulses Beelzebub or the devil and all of his demons. And that's the, that's the power and protection is his blood. It doesn't only, only just clean us, it repels the devil. It repels him because it's not dead blood, it's living blood. It's still living after all of these years. It's alive. And when we ask him to come and to wash us and to sprinkle us, we don't have to plead, we don't have to beg. We, you know, it's not like we have to go into court and beg. Uh, like we're pleading a case, we just need to declare it because it's done. It's given. And we're warriors and we need to speak and pray and talk to God as if we're warriors and as if we're victorious. How many of you are warriors? Yes. How many of you feel like you're victorious? Yes. Even if you have a battle once in a while with your mind, even if you have a battle once in a while with your thought life, even if you have a battle once in a while with stuff you do, if you ask him to come and cleanse you and you step and you walk in it and you accept it and you believe it, that's what makes you a warrior. That's what makes you victorious. But if you're there all the time, well, you know, I can never. Well, I did this, and I'm just going to always be like this. No, I've asked him to forgive me, but I don't feel, I still feel the same way. Shut up! Why do you feel the same way? You're letting your mind tell you that. You're not the same way. You're not believing in what the power of the blood really is. You're not believing in the living blood of Jesus Christ. If you're still walking around and you're still coming to the altar for the same thing that you've come for over and over and over again. You need to say, enough is enough. I'm done with that once and for all. I don't need to do that anymore. Yes, I get dirty. Yes, I do things. Yes, I need to ask him for his blood to come and wash me. But you don't need to be going back to the same old things from 10, 20, 30 years ago. you got enough stuff to deal with just yesterday or this morning. Let's focus on that and see what God might do. We're warriors. We don't have to beg, beg or plead. We are blood-bought blood saved, and we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. We're not in a courtroom pleading with the devil. We're victorious. When you put the blood of Jesus on something or you place someone or something under the blood by faith, Satan will feel, flee because of the blood, because he knows it's alive. You know, we are thinking, oh, you know, oh, flies are coming. Oh, it's, oh, it's, uh, no, you're not rotting. You're not going to hell. If you keep on, you, you're a liar and you stay a liar and you never become anything but a liar. Yeah, well, you might, because that's what the Bible says. But if you ask God to forgive you and cleanse you, it, it's done. Yeah. Shoo away those flies trying to make it like you're still dead living in that thing or dead in that thing, because the blood of Jesus is alive. The life is in the blood. Don't underestimate the power of the blood of Jesus. Our, this is what our battle cry should be. I want you all to stand with me. We should have a battle cry. I'm going to say it, and then I'm going to have you repeat it. How many of you feel like you need... Sometimes a, a little washing, a little washing. I'm not going to open up the altar for you to come up here and have a public bath. You know, back in the 
mm, early days. I think I, in a study I did, looked at about soap, it goes back to Babylon time. Um, and actually, the Islams started soap. They started soap. And then some years later, they, I mean, they created soap. It was their first, you know, maybe they knew they were going to need it a whole lot. I don't know, but they started it way back when. I don't even remember when. But then, um, sometime later, when Europe started having soap and making it a little more fragrant, they, they were enjoying soap so, so, so much that they were having these uh, bath houses opened. And they weren't bath houses where you went and got clean. They were bath houses where ungodly stuff was happening. And because of that, soap got a really bad rap. And they kind of got rid of it. And they were like, you know, because, you know, it went from being using soap to, to get clean to them they have these bath houses. And, and then there's all kinds of perversion and sexual stuff going on. So they said, get rid of the soap. That's the cause of all of this. And they got rid of the soap. What do you think happened when they got rid of the soap? Plagues came. They weren't clean. So germs had the opportunity to, to be created and they started having plagues and they started having a lot of death and it just began to run rampant. And then they went, oh, okay, we need to be clean. We need some soap. And then it changed again and they got back on right course and they did away with the bathhouses. Well, hey, we might not have bathhouses today, but we have our share of places of where there's filth from, you know, you, we don't even need to go there. That, that it's j just there. But... But the life is in the blood, and we need to not underestimate it. We need to realize the power of it. I can't remember exactly why I was telling you about that about the soap, but uh, <laughs> but that's what happened. It, you know, is that when you they, they 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 looked at it as a good thing, then a perverted thing, then oh, it's a good thing again. But the blood of Jesus is always the same, and it won't take you into some weird kind of a cesspool and it'll keep you in the presence and the cleanliness of the of God if you wash regularly. Our battle cry should be, I proclaim the victory of the blood of Jesus. I am blood washed, blood cleansed, blood bought, blood justified, blood safe, and blood ransomed. I proclaim the blood of Jesus. I want you to say that. And I know what I was telling you. I was, I was telling you that I'm not going to have you all come up and have a, a, a bath. You know, we're not going to come up because you're responsible for washing yourself. And that's what made me think about, so my brain does still work. Sometimes it's a little slow. It has to click back into gear, you know, but usually I'll get it and come back to it. Not always, don't worry, okay? It doesn't bother me, so don't let it bother you. <laughs> Isn't that a good thing, Julie? You with me, girl? I'm there. <laughs> I could uh, ask that to a few other people who I know are with me on that. So anyway. But, but we don't need, I, I'm saying that we don't need that because it's an individual thing where you have to come. You have to talk to Jesus. You have to talk to God. You have to, you have to open up yourself. He sees already, so it's stupid. It's pure stupidity not to say, here I am. I am undone. I need washing. I need cleansing. And then to accept it. Amen? Amen. How many of you want to do that today? Amen. Is there anybody who doesn't need to? Okay, good. What did I do with that? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Sorry, flipped inside. <laughs> Just getting it ready. Didn't mean to, uh, yeah, I did. Somebody needed to be waked up. I, I saw your eyes getting heavy. <laughs> All right, here's what we're going to say. This is our, our battle cry, okay, for today, and I hope for other days as well from here on. I proclaim the victory of the blood of Jesus. I am blood washed. I am blood cleansed. I am blood bought. I am blood justified. I am blood safe. I am blood ransomed. I proclaim the blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for the blood of Jesus, God, that was shed for us to die a martyr's death, God, for us so he could shed his blood. And that blood is not sitting in a basin somewhere, 
That blood is not stagnant, but that blood is still flowing. That blood is still alive. And we thank you today that we can take that blood and we can apply it to every part of our life, God. Lord, we can apply it. We can be cleansed. We can be washed. We are justified. We are protected because of your blood. We are kept safe because of your blood, God. We are ransomed by your blood, Father. We thank you for the truth of your blood, God, in our lives that washes us. We thank you. Not only do we have the blood, but we have the water. We have the word. God, and these together, God, are a mighty force in our life for us to stand strong in who we are in you. No reason for wavering. No reason for backsliding. No reason for going backward. But God, reason for being ready for the next move and for what you want to do in our lives and through our lives, God. I pray for each person here, Father, who knows you, who's living for you, who's accepted you as Lord and Savior. God, as they, as they contemplate, as they look, God, as they open their ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is speaking to them regarding their own condition, Lord, you speak as only you can speak. You speak in that gentle, still voice, God. And Lord, that those who have too much clamoring, God, and they can't hear, then shout, shake, wake them up from their slumber. Shake them, God, into the reality of what this life is all about and why you saved us, not just to be halfway in and halfway out, to be committed completely, wholly given to you, Father, effective for this purpose and this destiny, God, on this earth and this day that we live in. Father, I pray that you would work in the lives of your people. And Lord, I pray for those, and maybe there's somebody here today who's not saved, has never said yes to Jesus, has never accepted Christ as Savior. I want to give you an opportunity because just as we talked about the power of the blood of Jesus, just by saying yes, just by coming up and praying a prayer, raising your hand and saying you want to be saved, you can be saved, you can be washed in the blood, your life can be turned around forever where you'll be totally changed. And if you're backslidden, if you've been away from God for some time and you know you need to rededicate your life because you're dirty, you're dirty, then this is for you as well. If anybody's out there and needs to be saved, wants to be saved, wants to experience the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus, I want you to raise up your hand right now. Raise it up high so I can see it. Lift up your hand or if you're backslidden, you need to get yourself right with God. Raise up your hand. I see a hand right here. Come on down. Anybody else? Any other? Anybody else? I, I, if I don't see you, but you've got your hand raised, it's a little hard to see everybody. Come on down. Let us pray with you. Don't leave this building without knowing that you know that God has cleansed you, that you're saved, you're washed in the blood. From that day on, you'll be able to walk in victory. You won't have to go back to the old way of life that you've been living, but God wants to do something new in your life. Anybody else? One last chance. I believe that there's somebody else out there just kind of struggling right now. If that's you, give you one more opportunity. All right, Father, you see this one, Lord. We pray, God, that you touch this life. Lord, let it be a lifetime deliverance and acceptance, God. A new walk with you, Father, for the rest of her life, Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name that you touch her, wash her, cleanse her. Father, establish her in the kingdom that she might be an effective warrior for you and live for you wholeheartedly, Lord. Lord, we thank you. Bless your people, God. Bless your people. Lord, we thank you. Thank you. Just take a minute and thank him. Ask him. Take this minute just to ask God to examine your heart and see what, what he might say. Just a moment. Just a moment, and I'm going to let you go. Father, you speak to hearts. Shine your light as only you can shine your light. That little area of unforgiveness, a moment of jealousy, bitterness, resentment. Lord, lustful thoughts, sinful thoughts, nasty thoughts, scary thoughts, thoughts of death and harm that don't belong in our minds, our sickness, our whatever, things that are not pure and holy, God of the goodness of what you have for us. Lord, cleanse, purify. Speak as only you can speak. Shine your light, God. And then, Father, sprinkle, 
Sprinkle our hearts with the blood of Jesus and wash us and cleanse us afresh, Lord. I ask it in Jesus' name. I ask it in Jesus' name. I ask that you do that, Father. Seal this word to the hearts of your people. Lord, bless them as they go. Bring us back again tonight to hear a great word on prayer. Lord, we need to be ready. Equip us, prepare us, ready us, God, so that we will be, we will be people with a heart after you who will be effective in this earth, Father. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before you go, remember that? Let me see if you're still smiling. You smiling? I thought Pastor Mike did a superb job of taking the offering this morning. Remember your purse in your pockets? We have a hard time with our purse and our pockets that need to be converted. Remember that? He was saying that when he was taking the offering. Well, some of you must not have reached back in there for the, what was the word he used? I wrote it on my offering envelope. Oh, what was it? He used a word. Where's my offering envelope? Go pull it out. Tell me what it is. Where's Mike? He knows what he used. Anyway, our heart and our mind are converted, but we don't have, and we don't have a problem with that, he said, but our purse and our pocket. Oh, there you are, right in front of me. You used a word. It was our extra word. Beyond. beyond. It was a beyond offering. And some of you didn't reach in for the beyond. And so I'm going to ask you, because we have come up a little short today, and uh, so we need to do a little extra. If you didn't do that extra, some of you came in late, please, if you can come, bring an offering on your way out. Do a, do a beyond. Give a beyond what you could or did do. Take it a little bit further for us this morning, if you would, on your way out. Bless you. I pray the blessing of God over you. Walk in cleanliness and holiness. Amen. God bless you as you go. Come back for church tonight. It's going to be good. Washed. Oh, let him wash you.